What was Peter Sellers' funniest movie? Who inherited all his money? And was Peter Sellers actually mentally ill? What sort of stupid question is that? Are you blind? Welcome to Do You Remember? I am Nostalgic Nick. The human chameleon, Peter Sellers, was the first actor to receive an Academy Award nomination for playing three characters in one film. And he also inspired some of the comedy legends, including Robin Williams, Eddie Murphy, and Will Ferrell. You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> of course, Elvis was a huge fan and never went anywhere without his collection of Pink Panther films. But Sellers became so absorbed in his roles that he claimed he had no personality of his own. And his struggles with jealousy were legendary. You won't want to miss this crazy story, but before we tell you about the dark side of Peter Sellers, please hit that thumbs up icon to show your support, and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a memory. An Expert Mimic In Peter's early years at the BBC, he met comics Harry Seacombe and Spike Milligan, and the trio started The Goon Show. The wildly popular radio comedy showcased the young actor's talents as impressionists. Put some James Bond go up in air kit. <laughs> Press his wrong button goes into ground. <laughs> and the cast of Monty Python were huge fans. John Cleese said they were obsessed with it and used to listen to that in the same way that people listen to Monty Python. Cleese and fellow Python Graham Chapman also co-authored multiple scripts with Sellers, but the only film that was produced was The Magic Christian, which John Cleese admits was pretty terrible. Th th 30,000 pounds? Yes. Cleese told NPR that Sellers could do a perfect impersonation if he listened to someone for just five minutes. He said the actor spoke to people in strange voices more than he used his own, and said, quote, Sellers was so adept at inhabiting other characters that each morning he had to find his own voice. During a 1978 guest appearance on The Muppet Show, Sellers declined to appear as himself and told Kermit, quote, There used to be a me, but I had it surgically removed. Creating Inspector Clouseau Peter Sellers landed the role of Inspector Clouseau in The Pink Panther after Peter Ustinov dropped out, and he proceeded to steal every scene he was in. Inspector Clouseau was initially scripted as a sober and dignified policeman, but that all changed after Peter Sellers was cast. It was you that gave it to me. Message! What? You mean message! Look, I know what I mean, you lunatic! Now Sellers was allowed to improvise on set and began drawing comparisons to comedy greats like Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. Director Blake Edwards enjoyed working with Sellers and indulged his eccentricities. Edwards once received a late night phone call after a troublesome day of shooting and Sellers told him, quote, I just talked to God and he told me how to do it. But after Sellers' idea did not work the following day, Edwards told him, quote, Peter, next time you talk to God, tell him to stay out of show business. Three actors for the price of six. Now, Peter Sellers didn't have much respect for directors, but Stanley Kubrick was a notable exception. Kubrick had previously directed Sellers in Lolita and was so impressed with his versatility that he was his first choice for the title role in Dr. Strangelove as well as Captain Lionel Mandrake and President Merkin Muffley. Peter Sellers' $1 million salary equaled 55% of the film's entire budget. Bold curiosity for the adventure head! <laughs> and Kubrick told reporters, quote, he got three actors for the price of six. Near the end of filming, Sellers met 21-year-old Swedish actress Britt Eklund, who had recently arrived in London to start shooting the Richard Attenborough film Guns at Potassi, and they were married just 10 days later. And then Eklund quickly learned her new husband was definitely the jealous type. Was Peter Sellers mentally ill? Blake Edwards said, quote, If you went to an asylum and you described the first inmate you saw, that's what Peter had become. He was certifiable. Britt Eklund believed her husband was bipolar and he should have had more help. So, was he actually crazy? 
Some people believe his eccentricities were related to his upbringing. His parents were variety entertainers, and life on the road was difficult for the family. He was christened as Richard Henry, which they then switched to Peter to honor his stillborn older brother. Sellers shared his parents' interest in being an entertainer, but his father Bill told him he was only talented enough to become a road sweeper. He did have a close relationship with his mother Agnes, who encouraged him but also had no qualms about leaving him all home alone as she toured. Uh, aside from that, being there was an ambition, you know, that I wanted to do all my life. Now, Peter Sellers was always fascinated with the paranormal and believed he was the reincarnation of burlesque performer Dan Leno. He also based most of his decisions on the advice of astrologer Maurice Woodruff. The soothsayer once told Sellers someone with the initials B.E. would become very prominent in his life and he subsequently married Britt Eklund and acted in a movie for Blake Edwards. What Sellers did not know was that the movie studios ingeniously began to pay Woodruff under the table to steer him toward their projects. Who received Peter Sellers' estate? Sellers married Miranda Quarry in 1970, but then fell into a chaotic affair with Liza Minnelli in 1973. Sellers divorced Quarry in 1974 and married 23-year-old Lynn Frederick in 1977. He tried to change his will shortly before his death, but the paperwork was not submitted on time, and Frederick received $4.5 million. His children from his first marriage, Michael and Sarah, received £800 each. But Michael Sellers wasn't surprised to have been excluded from the estate. He said, quote, after all those times when he chucked Sarah and me out of his house and had his chauffeur dump all our toys at mom's. Michael Sellers claimed that Frederick was a gold digger and a drug addict and only had 27,000 pounds left in the bank when she died. Oh yeah, and she died at 39 years old. The Life and Death of Peter Sellers when Roger Lewis's biography, The Life and Death of Peter Sellers, was released in 2000, Michael Sellers called it 400 pages of rubbish. Michael said, quote, Dad did some horrendous things to me and my sister Sarah, but he also claims he's been hardened by the experiences and tries to not be too cynical. Michael reached out to his dad in a desperate act when his first marriage fell apart and they were together a few hours later having a man-to-man -man conversation. Michael said, quote, At last, we had something in common we could talk about. Strife with women. It was the beginning of a long overdue reconciliation, but Sellers had another heart attack and passed away seven weeks later. Michael showed up to the Cannes Film Festival in 2004 to defend his father's honor when the biopic was released and people close to the actor claimed the film was highly inaccurate. But Blake Edwards claimed Jeffrey Rush's performance was the best he'd ever seen, and said that in some shots, he thought he was seeing the real Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers was fitted with a pacemaker after having his second major heart attack in 1977, and during a press conference the following year, a reporter brought it up. He began a question with, quote, I understand you've had some heart attacks, and Sellers interrupted him to say, quote, Yes, but I plan to give them up. I'm down to two a day. The guy was hilarious, there is no doubt about that. Peter Sellers was set to return for an eighth time as Inspector Clouseau in Romance of the Pink Panther. He was also slated to play the leading role in Love Sick and Unfaithfully Yours, both of which were eventually played by Dudley Moore. The incredibly talented Peter Sellers died on July 24, 1980, and he was interred at Golders Green Crematorium in London. All right, that's enough of me, now we need to hear from you. That's been our look at the dark side of Peter Sellers. So what was your personal favorite Peter Sellers character? What about his best film? Do you believe he was actually mentally ill? Or was there some other explanation for his behaviors? Please get in the comments and tell us all things Peter Sellers. I know someone out there actually met him. Tell us about it.
If you enjoyed our deep dive today, please click that thumbs up icon to show your support. Subscribe to our channel so you don't get left behind. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you very much for watching.